Mrs. Keene, and I'm the reading teacher in the building along with Mrs. DeChico. But I also absolutely love theater. It's a big, big part of my life, always was. I don't necessarily spend time on stage now, but I do see many shows a year. I think it's a great escape from everyday life, and I think we all need that. Give me a round of applause if you think a little escape from life is in our auditorium at Grind School. And that's an amazing thing. We are able now to have an assembly where we can come together as the Grimes family and experience something together. And I think it's been a long time that we've been able to do that. So let's give a little round of applause for that. Well. in one way or another. And today, we have the honor of celebrating someone who is magnificent. His name was Jackie Robinson. And he was the first black baseball player to play in the major leagues. That's something else, and I'll tell you why. Because he had the strength of character to stand up and take a stance when people were insulting him and making him second guess himself that he didn't deserve to be on the field, he stood strong. And I want to tell you something. Every single one of you faces adversity of some sort in your life at some point. And maybe it's not as grand of a scheme as something like Jackie Robinson, or as we saw in our wax museum yesterday, Rosa Parks, Ruby Bridges. Maybe it's that you struggle with math, or maybe someone's not being so nice to you on the playground. But there's two things that you can do. You can take one path, and that's throw your hands and give up. Right? Doesn't that sound like the easier one? But there's no reward in that. The other path you can take is to move on and try to figure out a solution and to make a change. And so today we're honoring Jackie Robinson for being that person that took that path, the harder path. And I am asking you, every single one of you, to keep that in mind when you face adversity in your life. Dig deep and take the harder path because there's no reward for giving up. So without further ado, this is our production here at Grimes with our drama club who has worked so hard and many of those, these students that you're going to see on stage have never been on the stage before. This is their first time. So please, be respectful but more importantly, enjoy this nice 15 minute journey back in history into the life of Jackie Robinson.
That's right. You're watching today when I've been allowed to play America's game. Hey, can I get some coffee stacks over here? Well, thanks to my hero, Jackie Robinson, baseball's a better game, but America's a better place. or use the same restrooms, and they certainly weren't allowed to play baseball in the major leagues. But the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Mr. Ricky, wanted all of that to change. So he invited young Negro League baseball players to his office. It was Jack Johnson. But Jackie showed that he could control his temper. Do you want a baseball player to break the up for himself? No, we want a man with the courage not to fight back. All across America when Mr. Ricky signed Jackie to the conference. Then after a year in the minor leagues, Jackie was ready to suit up, not just for Brooklyn, but for the whole entire African American community. There was one doctor who wouldn't have anything to do with it. Him and their feet. The Ku Klux Klan 
threatened him and his family. But through it all, Jack did resisted the temptation to strike back in anger. anger shouts from the crowd, maybe they bothered him, bothered him more than he let on. Well, one day in a game at Ohio, things took a turn for the better. Y'all yeah, be waiting for you in the parking lot after the game, Robinson. Hey, Pee Wee, what's a good old boy from the South doing playing ball with the black man? He decided to stand up for what's right. He jogged up to Robinson and put his arm around his shoulder. When the fans saw Jackie, Pee Wee take Jackie's side of things, they settled down and enjoyed the game. And when the rest of the league saw how talented Jackie was, they quit worrying about the skin color and started worrying if they could beat those dogs. Despite, that, despite all that pressure, Jackie led the Dodgers to the World Series and near the field of the year. Some say it was the toughest season any ball player could ever endure. No doubt the reason today's game is so exciting is because Jackie had the courage to turn the other cheek. We're in the top of the ninth, they have gotten their closer. Marilyn O'Meara, here's the pitch. Track one. Here comes the pitch. Straight two. Here comes the pitch. Straight three. The Yankees win. By changing baseball, he changed America and the world for better. Everyone should be focused on the performance and what's happening on stage. The people that are up here put in a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort to bring this to you. And hopefully, we can continue to bring more things like this to you, you know, with your behavior, your behavior is improving, and as we go along, the teachers feel that, you know, we can bring you different things, dances, plays, and other um, entertainment of things that you want to do here in the school. So this is a first step, it's a test. The first group, we had the Jackie Robinson play, they did an excellent job, an excellent job. Okay, the performers and the crowd did an excellent job. So let's see if we can continue on this day. So far, so good. Let's keep it up. Um, maintain our decorum and our respect so that we can continue to do this over and over again, okay? I want to introduce Miss Knox. Miss Knox, come forward. She's going to 
going to you a little bit about the plans ahead of time. A lot of hard work in organizing this, so let's give her uh, the respect she deserves. Thank you. Today we have some very special boys and girls who have been working extremely hard and most of them are going to be representing some very important people who contributed to black history. So he already went over the house rules and we are going to begin the play with the National Negro Anthem. So can everyone stand up to acknowledge? If you know the lyrics, I am aware that Mr. Cornelius has been playing this um, for some, quite some time, so if you know the song, please feel free to join in. So this song is going to be sang by Miss Kariatu from 4P. <laughs> I was then arrested and taken to jail. 
When I was released from jail, I decided not to not pay the $14 fine and instead fight to take an unfair bus law. My friends helped to organize a boycott. A boycott is when a group of people come together and refuse to buy or use something. All black people who usually rode the bus to work agreed to walk instead. This meant that the bus company lost money. An employee minister helped tell people about the boycott. His name was Martin Luther King Jr. He told people to fight for what they believed in, but do it peacefully. While the boycott was going on, my lawyers took, the, took my case all the way to the highest court in the United States, the Supreme Court. My lawyers said that I should not have been arrested. They said that segregation of buses should be against the law because it treats black people unfairly. The bus boycott lasted for more than a year. Then on December 20th, 1956, the city of Montgomery got an order from the United States Supreme Court. It said that buses can no longer be segregated. This was a great victory, but many restaurants, stores, and even hospitals were still not open to African Americans. It took many years and many battles and segregation. I, Rosa Parks, worked very hard for the civil rights movement. I received many honors and awards for all I have done. I met with many famous people and put in presidents. I helped to find housing for the homeless. I founded an institute to provide education and guidance for young people and teach them about black history. Museums and libraries and even a street have been named after me. I am not for saying you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it's right. I hope my story will inspire others who stand up for themselves. My name is Rosa Parks and I would like to offer you to be treated with dignity and respect. My original name was Cassius Marsh Kellius Clay. At the age of 18, I won a gold medal at the Olympic Games in Rome. I became the world heavyweight champion in 1964. In 1964, I joined the nation of Iceland and changed my name to Muhammad Ali. At the time, the United States was fighting the Vietnam War. In 1967, I refused to join the Army forces because of my religion. I was convicted of breaking the law. My title was taken from me. I was not allowed to box. I was allowed to return to boxing in 1970. And the next year, the United States Supreme Court overturned my conviction. I was a gifted boxer with the personality that brought me fans and fame. I was known such as, for such phrases as I am the greatest and float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Slave slaveholders. 
After my release from prison, I helped to lead the Nation of Islam during the period of its greatest growth and influence. I met Elijah Muhammad in Chicago in 1952, and then began organizing temples for the nation in New York, Philadelphia, and Boston in the cities of South. I founded the nation's newspaper, Muhammad Speaks, which I printed in the basement of my home, and initiated the practice of requiring every male member of the nation to sell an assigned number of newspapers on the street as a recruiting and fundraising technique. I also articulated the nation's racial doctrines on the inherent evil of whites and the natural superiority of black people. An articulate public speaker, a charismatic personality, and an indefat indefatigable organizer. I, Malcolm X, expressed the pent-up anger, frustration, and bitterness of African Americans during the major phase of civil rights movements from 1955 to 1956. I preached on the streets of, Mar of Harlem and spoke at major universities such as Harvard University and the University of Oxford. Most important issues were black identity, integrity, and independence. I urged my followers to defend themselves by any means necessary. With the influence of Nation of Islam, I helped to change terms used to refer to African Americans from Negro and colored to black and African American. On February 21st, 1965, I was assassinated while delivering a lecture at the Adubon Ballroom in Washington Heights. My ideas and speeches contributed to the development of black nationalist ideology and the black power movement. It helped to popularize the values of autonomy and independence among African Americans in the 1960s and 1970s. together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi and, I mean, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream, I have a dream that one day, that one day, that one day in Alabama, with his vicious races, with his governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and notification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, this of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died. Land of pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom reign. And if America is to be a great nation, this must come true. So let freedom reign from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom reign from the mighty mountain of New York. Let freedom reign from the heightening Algernese of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow caked Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the Caravious slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi. Every mountainside, let freedom ring. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring, 
from every city and every, every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing the words of the Negro spirit, spiritual, free at last, free at last, God, great God Almighty, we are free at last.
still alive, but my enemy, you leave my feet down in history with your ability to rise. You may try me in the very dirt, but still like that's I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why you upset with my friend? Cause I walk like I got oil wells hop, pumping in my room. Just like moons and like suns, with the sensory of sun time, just like hope swinging high, still I rise. Do you want me? Do you want to see me broken? Bow head and low eyes, shoulders falling like tail drops, weakening by soul for prize. Does my hopefulness offend you? Don't take it over hard, cause I laugh like I got gold lines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like it, I rise. I rise, I rise, I rise.
hard work that you put in to help putting the play together, to supervising the students today. Everyone did a great job all around. Hopefully we can continue this and keep it going. Um, the cast members, we gotta take some pictures. Dancers, we have to take some pictures to tell everyone to come back out on stage. Um, all the presenters, please come back on stage so we can take some pictures. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.